I've just bought this R53 Mini Cooper S off Facebook Marketplace for a thousand pounds and it needs some work. So let's get on with it. Actually, first I've got to fix a bit of a damp and a mold problem in this garage. So give me 30 seconds and I'll fix that. The trick here is to not fall into the pit. You might be wondering why I've left the wheels on. <clears throat> did I forget before I jacked up the car? <laughs> yes, I absolutely did. But it doesn't matter because it turns out I don't have the security bit for the alloys. So I've just ordered one on eBay and it'll be here next week. Oh wait, is this gonna drop the radiator? It is. So currently the only thing holding it up is the pipe I'm about to take off. All right, that's good enough. That's hooked on something. No mess, no mess, come on. <laughs> I just cleaned this whole garage. Okay. So I just took this off, noticed this edge is a bit rough, turns out part of my water pump is still in there. It's just cracked the pipe. Just, just the finest scratches there. I think that's quite a good condition supercharger. Just about 100 milliliters came out of that supercharger. But it smells like cheese, like a Stilton. It smells like Stilton. Crack these loose. Wow, those actually don't weigh that much. Wow. Okay, I have disconnected the steering column. Let's see how much further we get now. What's holding you up? Okay, ah, okay. I see power steering pipes and wires connected. All right, power steering pump is disconnected. 213 mils from below, two from the back, which are quite hard to get to, quite hard to see even. Got your, get your head right up by the catalytic converter and then you can see them. All right, something's still holding it up. Oh, look at that. Uh, or not. Continuing to do things in completely the wrong order, I'm now going to test the cylinder pressure. Should have really done this before, but uh, I forgot. There you go, cylinder one's the highest, and then the rest more than 5 psi, so. I'm happy with that. Spark plugs. Yeah, cylinder one is the worst actually. But, um, definitely need a change, so I've put new ones in. Right, this is what I've got planned to keep the engine supported whilst I take the left hand side engine mount off, which you need to do to take the uh, bell housing off. So I've just got a uh, fairly sturdy uh, scaffolding board. Um, and then the best place I found from another video to hold the engine on under here under the thermostat housing behind this temperature sensor there is a bolt and that is for uh, this this pipe and the bracket that is attached to it you need to take this off to get the bell housing off otherwise it will get caught that little bracket that's what we need to take off and then that mounting hole that's where I'm going to support the engine from all right so then I've got a plate which can reach down to that 
and I've made up this little contraption with a chain. Uh, you might have to make up something slightly different. This is just what I have. Right, so the idea is I've fed that plate down there. I put a little kink in it just this way to give me a little bit more room for this chain. That chain goes up through the hole. Then I'm going to lift this up, put a big bolt through this chain. Uh, and that should be good. It's the chassis rail. Let's try and lower it. Um, interested to see what this clutch is like. It always felt a bit high and a bit spongy. This car's done 106,000 miles and there's no service history saying a clutch has ever been done so I just assumed wanted to do one anyway just freshen it up that's the difference between the old one I just took out and the new one so let's see that's pretty worn out so now I have these heat shields out of the way the starter motor disconnected I can see there's an oil leak coming from around this area now this, I believe, is the oil cooler and behind it is the oil filter and oil filter housing. Now, apparently these are common areas for oil leaks on these engines. So, in the leaky gasket kit, which I got from Modern Mini, it came with gaskets for the oil filter housing and the oil cooler. I have taken the oil filter out and drained the oil from here. I'm lightly screwing that back on so I don't, I don't want any dirt getting back in there. You can get a 36mm socket on the end of there and just about get a ratchet or a breaker bar in there. Now I can see two bolts, one here and the one here for the housing. Uh, I kind of need to use my phone to see where the other one is. Nope, I was wrong. I don't know what that one is down there. I can't really see. But it's this one, this one, and there's one hidden down there. All 13 millimeters. <laughs> there's no way water's flowing through that. Yeah, this is just a tiny, tiny radiator. Whoa. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, no. I actually ended up making this contraption of some garden hose before it was really struggling to even get like a dribble of water out of this now it's very free flowing it's almost as if the radiator isn't impeding the flow at all this should actually cool down the oil now i don't have a removal tool for this but the metal is actually a lot softer than you think so I'm, i've drilled a two and a half millimeter hole threaded in a self-tapping screw and uh, now you can just pry it out just show you here how soft the metal is. Just cleaned up this surface with a plastic scraper. New gasket there. And I've done the same underneath here. Plastic scraper all the way along. That's how I'm locking the flywheel. Oh, I'm attempting to take this crankshaft pulley off. I've tried a few things. These bearing pulley pullers didn't work. Modified it, still didn't work. Can't get the hook around the back of this pulley. Um, and also it's not big enough, so it just slips off. This is a brake piston pusher. Comes in a kit like this, one of these. Modified with a plate three bolts in the pulley and I am starting to get some movement now so it's 
slowly I can get this off. So I've got the engine mount off, engine supported with this bracket here. It's the same thing I used with the chain on the other side, but just with another hole and slightly modified. It sits on the chassis rail. It's fairly secure, but I also have it on the trolley jack um, just to be extra safe. Another jig I've had to build just out of some uh, scrap metal, a few bolts holding this together, and a cutaway so that you can get to this camshaft bolt. So that's what it looks like from the other side. And it's pretty simple to figure out the whole space is. So this face here is exactly in the middle of that bolt. So you can just line this up, mark some holes, and drill them. Let's see. Let's see. There we go. You can see that line goes straight through the middle of the sprocket. This tensioner is a 20 millimeter bolt, and this is kind of in the way. So that's quite tricky. It's also done up very tight on this engine. This garage is a complete mess. So are my clothes. I gotta leave it here for a couple days. The timing cover is on, the pulley is on, sprocket's on, timing is double checked. The timing chain tensioner is oil fed and doesn't spring out to tension until you get some oil pressure in the system, which I can't do until I connect the battery up and connect the starter motor up and stuff. Now, after I bought this mini, I went out for a test drive for about an hour. Um, all fine, but I got back and noticed a bit of steam coming out of the bonnet opened it up and this cap was leaking just a little bit. Apparently this is a common fault. Um, also they tend to leak in the seams around here. So I've gone ahead and just fitted a brand new coolant expansion tank and new cap. I've hit a bit of a snag. This bolt is destroyed. This is, I think, M14. So I need an M14. Uh, well, firstly, I need a one of these or a whole set, and then I need an M14 tap to uh, chase those threads and tidy them up. So it looks like I can't put in the subframe today. That's not good. Why is it doing that? I actually ordered slightly the wrong alternator and the only difference was the connector was in a different orientation and this bit of metal was in the way. So I just cut off that bit of metal and the alternator fit. Now we move on to some highlights from the two weeks it took me to debug some electrical issues. Firstly I swapped out some no-name spark plugs for some better Bosch ones, that smoothed out the engine. I got rid of some missed wires but not completely. I checked the live data from the O2 sensors, short-term and long-term fuel trims, retesting the fuel module, rechecking the fuel filter and eventually scoped the camshaft sensor and the crankshaft sensor at the same time to check the timing. Turns out it was in sync but one of the sensors was reading a low voltage, close to trigger voltage, creating this intermittent issue. It's meant to be 5 volts, but you can see here, it's more like 2.5. A 
and after all that I was still left diagnosing a vacuum leak. I had not been clamping down these intercooler rubbers enough and vacuum was leaking out causing low boost and low power. And after fixing that I was finally able to go out for a drive without getting any engine codes. It's finally done. Taking three months or so but I have an MOT. The car is all fixed. <laughs> Uh, that engine bay is dense, they have packed a huge amount in there, <laughs> which is impressive from Mini, from BMW, but <laughs> when you come to fix something, it's such a pain. But how does it drive? Maybe there's an occasional electrical problem, but mechanically everything's good. The lower control arm bushings have been replaced, and that has stiffened up everything a little bit. It still doesn't feel that great. I can't. I can't really trust it, and that could be down to the tyres, they're run flat tyres, which which are not considered the best when it comes to sportiness. And I just I just don't get the feel through the steering wheel. I will say it is very balanced, going around roundabouts you can feel there's a little bit of understeer, but it's not excessive. If you back up in a corner in the wet, you probably do risk lift off oversteer. And the engine... It does like to rev. And it's linear. It's quite torquey down low. And it has linear power delivery all the way up to almost 7,000 RPM. Which, for a racetrack, probably quite good. But on the road, when you want a bit of fun, I don't know. I think I'd prefer a little turbo boost instead. Let's just turn around, go back up that road. Ah, oh, that reminds me of the gearbox. I thought there was something wrong with it. It's so heavy and slow. You can't flick through the gears like you should in a car this small. It reminds me of my Saab 93, a big diesel estate which had a chunky slow gearbox <sighs> yeah <laughs> why am i fighting with it <sighs> whilst we're stuck behind this tractor we might put the roof down <sighs> that's quite nice i do like that but it's something you can only enjoy at slow speeds because after about 40 miles an hour there's so much turbulence in here it's, it's uncomfortable to say the least and this is just with the, the sunroof open if you open the entire roof it's even worse I actually made a mistake in my intro this is not an R53 this is an R52 the difference being this is a soft top Parking sensors, quite useful, because you cannot see anything out the back. Ah, and that brings me on to another point, blind spots. If I'm looking for my left blind spot, it's huge, you could fit a bus in it. time to sell this car now after spending a thousand pounds on parts, a thousand pounds on the initial purchase. Now if the exterior held up the car might be worth close to three thousand but there's a lot of dense scratches, imperfections around basically every panel and this really brings down the value which means I need to find a buyer who understands that mechanically it's fine and the value is there but they don't really care about the exterior. <laughs> It's also the lowest spec, no heated seats, no air conditioning, which doesn't help my case when I'm trying to sell it. Now, it would be nice to make some profit on this car, but I didn't really buy this as a means to make money. I just like doing it as a hobby. So if I can swap this with a different car that I'd like to work on as my next project, I take that as a win. <laughs>